We do start with Manchester United. First day of the season, first defeat of the season under new manager Eric Ten Hag. Attention is quickly turning to finding a striker. It emerged yesterday that a bid of around €9 million Euros for Bologna's Marco Arnautovic has been rejected. That news was put to Gary Neville during Super Sunday. Listen to what he made of it. I don't know. I, I, I have no comment on it. <laughs> I've got a comment, Dave. I've got a comment on everything in the world, <laughs> apart from Manchester United signing Marco Arnautovic today. I've got, I've got nothing to say. What has, what has happened to Man United? Seriously. What, Go what, on, Mike. What, what is going on? And I don't like putting the boot in. It's just. You I are, mean, no, aren't I, you? Go I, on. I'm, I'm, stick I'm, it, I'm stick not it in, stick Mike. The boot in, but Arnautovic was a quality player, but he said, what, he's, he's 33. Playing in 33, he scored 14 goals. He scored I mean, 14 goals in Serie A last we've season. Seen we've, seen we've, seen Falcao, we've seen Falcao, Ibrahimovic, Cavani, these last, these desperate sort Falcao, of experience. Igalo. Igalo. We've seen it now for eight, ten years. It's a pattern. It's happening time and time again. There's, I don't even get, we don't even get angry, we don't even get animated about it anymore. It's got to the point where I don't even want to comment who's about it. Who's making these decisions? Who's deciding which players are going to come in? You know, there's a dirt. We're talking about uh, Darren Fletcher, technical director. You've got John a new Mercer coach, well. John Murta. Obviously, he's involved. There's a new chief executive. There's talking that they're going back to bringing Alex Ferguson and David Gill back to the club. My goodness, what's going on? <laughs> right. <laughs> Welcome to everybody at home. Welcome to our guests this morning as well. Nabeid Haroun, Sam Abaseki and David Reid. Right, OK, so Marco Arnautovic to Manchester United. Sam, can you understand why the fans seem to be underwhelmed? Yeah, I can completely understand. You know, um, there's been a lot of speculation around Ronaldo's future. I can almost guarantee that no Manchester United fan had Arnautovic as his replacement. You know, you see some of their rivals with Manchester City, they just won the league and they're already bringing in Haaland and Alvarez. You see Liverpool, they lose Mane, bringing in Nunes. Um, Sterling's gone to Chelsea after losing Lukaku. And then you see um, Arsenal as well, bringing in Gabby Jesus. Spurs, they have Harry Kane and, and Son, and they even improved on that, bringing in Richarlison, another great option. If you put Arnautovic in that list, he doesn't really fare very well. Obviously, he left um, the Premier League a few seasons ago. He still scores goals, but it's, it's just a strange one for me. Yeah, well, Manchester United fans and, and football fans in general, we want to know what you think of this. West Ham fans and Stoke fans might have something to say about it as well. Get in touch, as usual, hashtag transfer talk. We'll read some of those out. So, so Sam can understand why the fans are underwhelmed, Dave, but Eric Ten Hag wants him. Why? I mean, I'm trying to find some positives here. Now, in, in our pre-show meeting, I'm, I'm going to throw Nubaid here one because... <laughs> We were supposed to be doing this bit together where we pick out positives, but he, he's basically ditched me at the last minute. <laughs> it was a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been trying to look at some positives. I mean, Dave Jones highlighted some of it in, in that clip that we just heard. 14 goals in 33 games last season in, in Serie A. From Eric Ten Hag's point of view as well, he, he knows this player. Uh, he's played under Steve McLaren at FC20 and uh, Steve McLaren's assistant at the time was... Eric Ten Hag. So some of the coaching staff know what he is capable of. Granted, that was 12 years ago, more than 12 years ago, when he was just a, a younger player at that time. He scored goals in Serie A, the Bundesliga, Premier League, Eredivisie, Champions League. I mean, that's a good record, mm. scoring goals in those leagues. And you look at Bologna as well. They've moved on some good players in recent times. They've had, uh, you know, a, a track record of developing players, probably at the younger end of their career, when you look at uh, Tommy Asu leaving there, when you look at Aaron Hickey leaving there. Uh, they've sold another player, Arthur T Tate, as well, uh, uh, for, for good money during this summer. So Bologna have a track record of moving on good players, probably at the other end of their career. But... He had a good record in the Premier League, Nabade. The problem really is, um, honestly, I, was, I have two pages on why Marco Arnautovic is not the fix. <laughs> um, but the top line for me is playing style. Ten Hag wants to play pressing football, as we've seen in pre-season. Even Martial was conducting a pretty solid press. And Altovic has never been a player who presses, even when he was younger. Now he's at the latter stage of his career. That's going to continue. He's almost this centre forward who wants to sit in the box and players play into him and, and then play off him. But his, his link-up play is not great either. He's got 74% pass accuracy, which is really not ideal for Ten Hag. And also, I think Ten Hag would like to have three forwards that sort of interchange. We, we saw him kind of try that with Ericsson and essentially fail against Brighton. And Hasvich won't really fit the bill in that sense. So 
Do, do, are you not, you're not just getting him in in case he comes in and might have a couple of moments in games similar to Odi Nagalo, similar to Zlatan, similar to Cavani to an extent? If that is the plan, then why not? But that's not what United need, and that's the problem. Ten Hag has shown adaptability, though, with his strikers, particularly at Ajax. You know, he played with a, a number nine like Allaire, but he also played with a false nine like uh, Dusan Tadic. So he, he's shown adaptability in what he wants his forwards to do. Does Marko Arnautovic not, not fit into that false but nine? The thing is, you, I think like the one big point you've gone after is that he, he knew him at FC20. They're not even Facebook friends anymore. It's been 12 years. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think that relationship is still there. I'd be surprised if they still have each, other, each other's numbers. Um, purely because Arnautovic went to China and probably changed his number. But I just, <laughs> I just don't, I don't f feel there's a match there at all. It's just another stopgap for United. Another problem that's going to come back around in the summer next year. Um, and we are going to look at other options. That's part of the problem United have. There aren't many options. Well, at six o'clock this morning, Nabeid, I specifically asked you to come up with positive. <laughs> <laughs> Go on air for two hours and then that happens. Um, so plans out the window there. But, but Sam, we have seen, and, and Nabeid's mentioned it there, and the, the Super Sunday uh, panel and, and David Jones were mentioning it there as well. They have gone for this short-term fix before. Yeah, we, like Nabeid said, we saw it with Ibrahimovic, Cavani, Igardo. Ibrahimovic, he was actually quite successful in terms of um, goal scoring. He scored 29 times in 53 appearances, helping them win the Europa League and the Carabao Cup, but he also missed a lot of games due to injury. He missed 46 games in two seasons. Cavani started really well at Manchester United the first season. The fans loved him, but in the second season, he just wasn't really a part of the squad. You know, he had a few injuries when he was playing, didn't score that many goals. Egalo, I, I guess it was his dream come true. He said it many times. He just wanted to play for Manchester United, but output-wise, he wasn't really scoring that many goals. So if we're looking at all of those three examples, I don't, I don't really, I don't really understand this, Anatovic. I, I can understand, you know, working with him in the past, but like Nabeid said, it was a long time ago. So, it is really an interesting one. I think that, it's, it's yeah. easy to criticise. It's the easy thing to do to criticise Manchester United for this, but th this was never their plan at the start of this window. This mm. is something that has, uh, you know, evolved as the window has gone on. I think the Cristiano Ronaldo situation has meant that they're now looking at someone like Marco Anatovic. It was never on United's radar that, that Ronaldo would turn around and say he wanted to play Champions League football and, and potentially move on from the club. And we understand, you know, that's still his position. Mm. So United have been left in, in this playing a little bit of catch-up. They need to plan almost without Ronaldo, but they also need to plan with Ronaldo. So it's a difficult situation. The easy thing to do is to criticise them for this, but... I don't think this was their plan at the start of the window. We're talking about how if Manchester United are, are wanting to sign a striker and we're saying that it shouldn't be Marco Arnautovic, or, or two of you are certainly saying it shouldn't be Marco Arnautovic, who should it be? But We want your opinion back home as well, by the way. Hashtag transfer talk and let us know. But does any names, any names that spring out? I feel like this won't be a very popular shout, so you can hashtag transfer talk and be very angry at me for this. But <laughs> as Dave said, I think the United haven't planned this window very well, which has landed me at this situation where they have to look at very realistic, quick fixes. Uh, and Andrea Bellotti was released from Torino. Um, I really liked him in Italy. Uh, I'm not too sure why Torino released him. He's had a very good record there. He's also been playing at the elite level for the last seven seasons. That's a really key sort of factor for me because three of the last four years in Arnautovic's career have been spent in the Chinese Super League. So, Bellotti could come in, he'll be fit, he'll be ready to play. Um, really and truly, the, the stats between the two aren't too far apart, but I'm thinking you bring him in for free, he'll be fit, he's young, he can press, he's not a brilliant presser, but he can press. Uh, he's got 0.59 goals and assists per 90. Uh, Arnautovic is at 0.50, which really isn't a huge difference. But I think... If you're looking at, let's get an easy bit of business done, this is probably one to go with if you're looking for a stopgap. I know Dave has got a lot of options for non-stopgap related options, but if Ronaldo stays and you need a backup, Bellotti, it could be that guy. Mm. I've, I've, he's been linked with, with Wolves, actually, Bellotti, hasn't he? Yeah. I didn't realise he hadn't got a club yet. I've kind of come at it a slightly different way in terms of let's throw the kitchen sink at someone rather than get a stopgap. The names that I would throw out, someone like Tammy Abraham, 17 goals last season in Serie A. Jonathan David, 15 goals in Liga. Even an Ivan Tony, uh, 12 Premier League goals. All of those three would cost a lot of money mm. for Manchester United. But if you're looking for a longer term 
signing, maybe one of those three. They've also been linked with Sesco as well. We've heard numerous rumours, but we've also heard that they haven't watched him play that many times. He's also very young. Would it be a lot of pressure for a young player like him to come into that high-pressured environment that Manchester United is? So, yeah, I think those options that you said, especially Tammy Abraham, it will cost a lot to bring him back to the Premier League, but we saw what he can do when he's trusted to be that, that vocal point. And, and if they do bring him back, then that would be incredible. The worry is, if Tammy Abraham comes back, does Ten Hag start Ronaldo through the middle of Tammy Abraham? Mm. And then you're back into the cycle of the Ronaldo saga, which will continue anyway. But then Tammy, the reason he left Chelsea is because he wants to play first-team football. He's done very well at Roma. And he can be United's go-to man if Ronaldo goes. If Ronaldo stays, then you need someone who will be a very decent backup. Yeah, well, well Mark Brumpton has actually said, what about Sesco from Salzburg? So you mentioned him as well there. There's someone also saying Timo Werner there as well. And a more general point from Sean, who says Manchester United are now a disgrace for football club. They can't keep going for old attackers like Arnautovic. They should focus on buying a young attacker like Sesco or Anthony. I think Anthony plays more as a winger. United haven't bought a decent young striker since Wayne Rooney.